Oh boy, this is uh, this is gonna be fun, you hey guys. Oh, it's interesting. The old control panel was uh, Guilty Gear. A single player. We're gonna have to swap that out for a dual. Got the new dual one sitting here. So uh, obviously, when we get to that stage, we can do that. But the big uh, the big challenge right now, of course, is going to be the wiring. Now, the power supply is uh, is different than the one that's in the blast, of course. Well, not of course, but that's that's the way it is. And, uh, and of course we don't have the one in the blast but it does mean some of the casing fittings are a little bit different um, I mean ideally it would be better to really get a blast power supply in here and just have the step down transformer and off you go but we are going to do it the hard way I guess um, I'm going to try and not sort of uh, break up any of the existing cabling in case I do want to convert it back at some point uh, with an original blast power supply if I can get hold of one but uh, in, in the meantime I've just got to figure out how everything's going to fit in here now there's an old uh, well not an old but a um, transformer in there uh, for the way that this was set up previously straight to the monitor and clearly this was being run without the original Sega blast power supply which is why it probably wasn't in there and with a switching power supply probably so we we don't need that guy that guy can come out of there and then I've just got to figure out how I'm going to use the Sega Versus power and uh, connection point through out to the wall power because this whole panel here is very much a different size to the panel that was uh, on the Sega Versus which is buried in here somewhere <laughs> uh, it's this one here so I need to take a look at that and see what I'm going to do there. Um, and then of course, you know, we've got all the, the cabling that's currently in the Sega Blast, including, this actually included the cabling up to the Versus, because remember this did have a Versus thing on it. And, you know, eventually guys, you know, it's not out of the question to actually have a second blast machine next to it side by side and actually run versus that way rather than uh, end to end on two separate cabinets using the same wiring so lots to do here um, the main thing is to get stuck in and get started um, I think in terms of layout I'm just looking at this and thinking the coin box needs to come over the top here I'm going to put a, my Logitech um, uh, 2.1 system in here, much better sound, which is what I had in the Versus. Probably if I remove this, I should be able to put the Logitech behind there. Hopefully I'll get the power supply slid in here, and then the uh, patch panel for that around the back. And then over this side, we've got a, um, a rail, which we'll be able to put the Namco 256, which is currently hiding somewhere behind there on the board <laughs> get that out in a minute uh, and so that would slide nicely in there like it was in the Sega Versus and that's um that should all fit I'm hoping so let me spend some time now unraveling all this cabling and maybe laying out the parts to see where they're going to go and uh we'll see if it's going to work right guys so i've looked at the wiring again on the sega blast of course it's been such a long time uh, since i looked at this last but uh yeah so the whole wiring is supported through this breakout board um, which supports things like model 3 and jammer um, different connections as well as the versus board so there's a nice little breakout uh, box for the wiring which the wiring supports so this end actually goes in to <coughs> into here for the uh, for the jammer connection and then that comes back out um, for an actual jammer connection connector but all of this wiring including all the power power and everything has all you know um, plugged specifically for that board and we don't want to use that uh, board because we've got our own breakout board uh, that's with the NAMCO 256 
And, and I know all that wiring works, of course, um, so well, let's not add any extra complexities and start hacking into these harnesses because right at the back, the biggest issue would be is this feeder into what would be the Blast City's power supply unit is obviously very custom would slot into the back and then that feeds everything in terms of power and all the rest of it. Uh, we don't have that supply so yeah this makes no sense to use this, it makes no sense to hack this up um, and obviously we've got a whole harness working over here that is complete, it just takes a little bit of rejigging because we don't have the two um, control panels so but I'm, I'd be you know much more happier getting this to work <laughs> um, than I am trying to hack into this uh, and maintaining this wiring so all of this is going to come out all the wiring um, I'll put it in a, a little box that'll be uh, my label for Sega Blast wiring I can use it again if I have to um, but I do end up getting a Sega Blast power supply I can bring this back out and rewire it I don't know if I'd actually do that or not but you never know never say never it's always good to have these things handy um, just in case some sort of project comes up maybe even another Sega Blast cabinet without the wiring in it um, hard to get these harnesses I guess so it'd be easy enough to get these plugs out of here um, this this one here is for the monitor, monitor controls for the original um, chassis now I do actually have that original chassis which I mentioned before but um, I'm not going to plug it in initially but I will keep this here and then if I do decide to swap the monitor over uh, at a later time then I could re-plug that in and then use those monitor controls at the front. The other wiring up to the top was for the uh, the versus system that was on here. Remember it had the LED versus um, on here previously. Now really all we need up here is power to the marquee light. So again um, I might just strip all of this cabling out and we'll just have what's needed in here. Uh, and that reduces a lot of the complexity of this build. <laughs> so I'm going to take all that out. Um, now, but just before I do that though, I still am going to make sure that everything fits in here. And I'm sure I can make it fit. But now that I know I'm, what I'm working with in terms of um, the wiring harnesses and whatnot, I'll now get the power supply pieces and um, get that guy out of here and make this work first and just make sure I'm happy with that and then um, we can get rid of all these this cabling here all right I'll get on to it so I started dragging the power supply across to here and then of course got, just got caught up in a mirror of all the cables uh, so I have to take one extra step and that is to sort out the the cables that I am going to use and remembering that the Sega Versus had uh, the second control panel um, had a uh, the wires going back to a patch bay and then because of the length of the wires I guess and just for ease of connection and so forth then on the other side of the patch bay it would then connect back through um, to the back of either the back of the power supply or the jab harness I guess and then you've got the player one um, controls coming through from there and the speaker sound and whatnot so we, we definitely don't need all of these um, and I'm, I'm hoping that I'll be able to bypass what was the patch bay for the player 2 controls and just go straight in to where it needs to go uh, but we'll see how that will pan out but for the moment what I had to do guys is I, I it's really hard working with wiring when it's all um, cable tied up you know people get it all sorted and then they cable tie it all together make it neat in the cabinet and it's just a nightmare when you're trying to follow stuff through so for the player 2 controls what I've been doing it's taken me about an hour actually just to s separate each of the um, each of the plugs and then have those individually cable tied up uh, as their own little snake I just find that so much easier to work with you can just pull out each one and connect it through once you've got everything connected then you, of course you can do your final cable ties to tie those up but as so many times I find that you know people have cable tied multiple things together and the odd cable gets through and then when it all comes out like this it's just a big mess so um, the other thing I found which took actually a really long time just to unravel 
was this mess of cables here is all related to the um, to the coin mechanism and of course that wasn't connected because there's no coin max there wasn't any coin max in the Sega Versus so none of this was working previously anyway and that all goes through to this single plug here so I'm going to disconnect this plug and just remove all this out of the equation and that helps drop down the number of wires um, otherwise everything else is sort of sorted out here left and right speakers we've got our earth seems like we've got our player one and two controls here I don't know why they're sort of replicated on both sides um, so I'm gonna to have to find that out once we chase the other ends um, in terms of how they're connected and this one here not sure about either I'm gonna to have to check that I think one of the other ones was drawing power from that anyway I'll see and then we've got um, the RGB and sync uh, which we won't need because um, we'll be running straight VGA uh, out of the Namco box but I'll just look on the uh, Sega Blast I don't think the Sega Blast has no the Sega Blast doesn't have a connection for this the way that the Sega Versus does so that'll definitely uh, be removed as well more than likely and then the end one there I believe is a um, series of power um, and again the way that we hook it up in the Blast it will be different probably won't need that either all right, well anyway, now that I've got that sorted, get this out of here and then I'll come back over this side and work out all the player one controls and then separate it from the jammer harness. <laughs> get all those cable tied away so I know where every single cable snake is going. Then we should get round to the, uh, the patch bay of the, the uh, power supply and bring the main power supply over and then bring it in here, guys. So yeah, it's, it's very tedious work. Again, it might look complicated, um, it's not really, just follow each plug and work out each cable, it's just a lot of cables and uh, obviously the Sega Versus did things a little bit different to the way the Blast City does it, and you can see on the back there there's only a few patches uh, for one and two players, and oh, we've got that white set of cables there, must be, that must be for all the power uh, on the Blast, so I'll hopefully see if that's uh, will work out well in fact it will work out anyway because all those cables are going to be removed from there and I'll replace it um, so it'll be more than likely that white one those two for player one player two and an earth and that's really all we need and also sound which I think goes up the side and the monitor will go straight to the monitor the RGB goes straight to the monitor and again we're using VGA all right guys so uh, <laughs> leave me with it and I shall carry on digging through this cable stack <coughs> It'll take a while i'll be back soon right so now i've uh, separated some of the cables out a little more <laughs> it still looks like a bit of a mess right but uh, we are getting there and uh, again it's good i like doing this just to again test my own knowledge of all the wiring and you know, i've done these jammer harnesses for a while now so i'm getting more familiar with them so i hope i'm getting it right um but anyway on the jammer harness itself we can see there's a bunch of cables that go into this power supply up here it's all the power and earths and out the side here I've separated out uh, coin one coin two and we've got player one or oh, player one player two and the uh, this out to the monitor again we're using VGA so we're not using these to go out to the monitor as such um, but we'll obviously leave them there because they're directly they're connected directly to the jammer harness. Um, they're split into two, which would have support the two uh, monitors in the Sega Verse. So that's, that'll stay there. Um, then we've got this interesting mess. <laughs> so this is... Um, this, I believe, is the sound. Plus, uh, probably the coin counter as well, I think, is sort of hooked off the back here. And it's all a little bit dodgy. And I know some of this wasn't plugged in. And certainly this connector is the one that would work for the back of the uh, power supply. Which has actually got the sound input there. And that wasn't plugged in anyway. And of course I wasn't getting any sound uh, out of the machine that would be a good reason why and I'm using a separate output straight from the Namco 256 to my Logitech, Logitech 2.1 uh, so again don't really don't really need it um, 
it's sort of odd how this comes out and obviously it comes to a different sort of plug that it's expecting um, for whatever reason in relation to this particular jammer uh, connector what it was originally suited for because that certainly isn't the connector that's on the back of the power supply that was in the Versa so um, and that then that one is which has sort of been hacked into it so anyway um, I'll probably just I don't know wrap wrap those up they're not going to be plugged in at this stage so that's the key ones for the jammer harness um, a few cables now I actually want to start removing again from the equation just to simplify things the first one uh, is this one here interestingly was the monitor cable and it's really just the monitor power so the other end of this cable here just had the, the power and on this end of the cable we've actually got the uh, power plug you can see we've also got the red you know RGB um, and sync for you know normal and medium res monitors we were connecting up that way um, and which would connect up on the side on the monitor side but again we're not using that because we're going straight VGA so we, but we do need the power so we still need this cable to connect the power through to this type of uh, Sega power plug because that plug is actually on the back of here because it's interesting guys everything on the Sega versus comes through onto these um, you know onto these breakout um, panels so it's that one so I just need to take that off then hook that up and then of course I only need one of those because we've only got one monitor in the blast so the other one of these I don't need so that'll go this is the wiring that went up to feed the um, the actual versus panel uh, for the winner lights and stuff so we don't need that so we can move that out of the way and the power for that is uh, actually in here and um, it's all sort of connected through so I might just leave that uh, power cord there don't need to remove it but then guys it's really coming to you know I've got a duplicate of all this all these wires and it looks like a lot because again just the way the Sega Blast uh, sorry the Sega Versus um, had wired everything through a patch bay and through these patch panels whereas um, on the Sega Blast it really is just looking for an earth player one player two it's got the um, uh, kick harness for the extra buttons which aren't actually connected up uh, even on this even on the Sega Versus and then you've got the monitor, con monitor controls guys so you don't have all these other connections we don't need the power running there we don't need the monitor running there um, again we don't even need the next one along which is the uh, let me point this out for you guys so that's the power monitor we don't need that's the kick harness we don't need because our kick harness goes direct um, from the buttons through into our uh, IO adapter uh, then we've got player one player two and they're dupl they seem to appear to be duplicated on either side um, we only need one set of those we've got a ground which we will need and then we've got our speaker wires and those speaker wires can come out of there because they can uh, run all straight up and be connected although at the end of the day as I said I'm not using those anyway use the two and one so I can start unplugging all those excess cables and really just come down to our player one player two a ground and uh, and then the power will run loose uh, up to the monitor and then that's um, that should clean up this wiring substantially now there's a few other little things that are interesting in the setup and that is one of the panels has um, a set of wires that go into the player one player two controls over the side but only I think this was player two so this only had player two hooked in there anyway and um, that's providing I think five volts uh, to a couple of the pins which I don't know what they're used for at 5 volts because it's not actually run through to the player one side and I don't know why it was run through here it's part of the specification and it would have made sense actually if they you know the plug on the other side then ran off I think the card readers require 5 volts they might require up to 
24 because they've got a solenoid in them but I don't know that's a that's something I'm going to have to work out because there was a weird thing that was going on with the um, um, the, the power for the uh, card readers was actually being taken from the kick harness because the kick harness also has um, five well it has five volts actually I believe running through that um, on a couple of the one or two, yeah I think one of the the pinouts and so one side was using the power directly from that so a, a plug on there let me show you so this is the back of the, the panel and this particular wire here um, interestingly it was feeding it was getting two power actually so it was getting off the uh, player two or the other socket the player one socket um, it was getting power and it's getting it off the kick harness but the other one doesn't do that the other one um, so I'm sort of bending around a bit here but the um, the other one just had the one socket and interestingly the two wires that look like would be the power and ground aren't actually connected yet both work so anyway there's something I haven't quite figured out or got right with the card readers so we'll come back to that that shouldn't be too difficult to, to figure out I just want to get this main wiring out of the way so then I can move everything up and put it in here and I think what I'm going to do guys is uh, I'll just remove that fan and then I'll get the uh, the face plate and we'll center it there and <clears throat> screw it through so uh, we can maintain that face plate and then the the, um, the back of that um, or the front of that where all those parts are will show through that hole there and that'll be uh, that should be that be suitable for what we would need to do get it get it going uh, i have actually ordered guys a sega blast power supply I found one on ebay today so um one of those is on its way but i won't use it actually i'll, I'll use it once i um if i get um, room to re set up the sega versus um, then obviously i'll need to take the stuff out of here and uh, well, it'll be easier to do that. I think take a stuff out of here, put it back in the Sega Versus, and then I'll uh, put the Sega Blast power supply in here, and then use all the original Sega Blast uh, cabling, which of course is still over here. And then that way I can use that connector um, to plug straight in to that one. <laughs> so uh, the other thing of course I need to, I've got an isolating transformer here because this is um, <clears throat> sorry step down transformer from 240 to 110 volts so got that thing's heavy too it looks deceivingly not so heavy but it's really really heavy like it's made of lead um, copper of course but uh, very tightly wound um, so I've got to find a place for that as well that's uh, that's that's safe and other than that, um, there's going to be an extra uh, you know, monitor power uh, on the back here, which needs to uh, come out. This monitor power, there's one on the one on the other side here. So this is pretty good. This is all labelled on here. And I thought this was interesting, guys, because it's got a volume control on here. And then, of course, we've got this unit on top which also has a volume control so this is like a piggybacked um, power unit and it's just hooked you know hooked in with the AC in from the bottom unit so I'm not sure why we've got both I guess ultimate flexibility for uh, other types of um, setups and voltages I believe the series of voltages across the top for the DC I think it does 12 volts out of here as well which might not be bad for running um, a replacement 12 volt light up in the marquee so you might look at that and there's a few cables hanging off here um, which come round to the back which are these sort of power um, power cables so that's that one's that's a power cable actually which has got the full uh, connection for the kick harness actually or kick harness configuration plug anyway it's 
obviously not a kick harness though because the whole lot of it is connected to the back of this power supply so it must be just whole loads of different voltages I'm not sure need to check all that and uh, this one um, again just more power all right guys so uh, still more work to be done let me strip away all the excess cabling and I'll move everything into place right so we have everything put into place a uh, bit of a jigsaw puzzle the main um, switching transformer down the back there and this actually was normally it was mounted the other way in the uh, Sega Versus and just by chance I had to have mounted this way and of course that meant that the, uh, the Namco easily clears that transformer and we'll still have a nice bit of space here um, in the front the power supply uh, should be fine there and uh, I put a I made a, I actually mocked up a, a new panel guys for the back Yeah, just mocked up a, another one there to, to make that panel fit rather than um, cut into the other one. And um, the power supply awarded anyway, the blast one actually comes with its uh, another back plate anyway, but regardless, it was easy enough to just knock up another template. And uh, yeah, the sub fits in here okay, um, just gets a little bit more room. Let's push back. Now there's not a lot of space here. You can see from the side door and I'm hoping we look at the side of this here you can see just sits a little bit proud the coin box um, cover which is molded on there so I'm hoping the back of that is just going to touch up against this it should do guys it should do I come back around here and push push this in I think there'll be just enough space just it will just fit and the cables that are there are the ones that I've ended up with that's the uh, the minimum that we need still need to investigate a little bit on that card reader side of things but we'll get there with that when we do some testing this was the blocker cables that came out that we don't need and now what I'm going to do is take all the cabling out of the Sega Blast. That's the original Sega Blast cabling. Let's get that out of there now. Now that we know it's all going to fit. Anyway, I shall uh, remove all of this. Um, just another thing to look out for on the Blast. They've got this little uh, block here where the main power comes in and, co and goes out. And, and it's basically got a switch on the other side. So when that door is closed, closes into the switch and closes the circuit and allows the, the mains power to flow through otherwise you can't actually um, if this is hooked up and you've got the front door open it will automatically shut the machine off um, I don't like to have it that way I know that's for safety reasons but I don't have it for the other cabs no need to have it on here so I'm gonna gonna remove this completely I'll just take the cables out because I still need the the, um, the socket on the other side to catch the door uh, and that's it. Oh, and of course the I.O. board will have to come out too because we're going to be a little bit close to the power supply. We're going to be right on it actually because that's where the, the box will go. So I'll get the I.O. board out of there as well. Of course remember we've got our own jammer board here. Um, I just quickly uh, hooked up the uh, kick harness down here. And that's where the sound was connected. That's that through that funny connection of cables. I did sort of look through it, um, and it wasn't. It certainly wasn't configured correctly. But that should come out of here and go into the sound on the on the back and in, in here. Uh, we got the sound in and sound out. Yeah, so it should go in there. Sound out. Yeah, that one would go out to the set to the speakers. All right. Well, let me get busy so I can get this wiring off. I need to test to make sure that that coin door will actually clear this. And if it does, I've then actually just got to go to and, and bolt all these things down, like the power supplies down and stuff. Um, and then we'll be ready to start the initial hookup and testing. So let's get on with it. And success. 
It uh, just fits. <laughs> so a little bit to spare. And uh, I think once the cabinet really gets crunched in together, it's currently just uh, stuck in, obviously, without the bolts. Um, yeah, it's uh, all going to fit perfectly. So, uh, so now that test is done, I need to go bolt this stuff down. And then, actually, what the other thing I want to do is take out these cassette speakers. They're supposed to be pretty good, actually, in the blast. Um, it's supposed to be three-way speakers, apparently. But because uh, we're running the Logitech, I will get my speaker. I did a bit of a measurement of the um, of where the monitor comes in. And there's enough. There's heaps of room on one side. On the other side, the frame sort of comes over a bit further to one side. But if I mount the speaker where the cassette is, it'll be hard up against the the side here. Um, and you know that will that will come through here uh, obviously down further but i can't push it in because the cassette speaker's there so anyway that that will sort of disappear mostly to the side and the monitor will miss it when it gets installed so yeah i'll get those done and uh, then we'll be ready for probably some elementary testing um, I do need to start thinking about putting the pieces back together. There is a, a, f a footer down the bottom there, like there is on the um, Astro City, you can see. So it's this bar here. So I need to um, I need to put that in, and it's, it's sandwiched in between the, the this top part and the bottom, so I better put that in before I forget. All right, so I've got the power supply all nicely... Uh, screw down that's nice and solid there as well as the uh the back one and uh for the transformer and i also got the logitech speakers into the frame so got out the old cassette speakers now remembering that these do come out a little bit um, what i did do is i just took the, the the frame that was here and reversed it so this frame would normally be the other way um, and that allowed me to put the speaker in there I put some gaffer tape over it to line it up and then I ended up get putting a hole uh, through the uh, through the bar and through uh, with a screw through into the, into the um, speaker so it's absolutely not going anywhere uh, same on both sides now yeah there is still a risk that once the monitor comes in here that it could foul the speaker now even though it looks like you know it's definitely going to foul it well the, the, the monitor curves in so um you know it sort of curves in and away i'll show you actually over here you can sort of see that yeah you know the, it's going to butt up against here but then it curves away quite quickly so i'm hoping the speaker is going to sort of sit that bit that comes out is going to sit in this gap let's hope so guys because otherwise i'm going to have to take it completely apart to get those speakers out once i put it all back together because <laughs> there's no other way of getting to these screws once the back is on um, and because I've screwed it in through the back here, I wouldn't even be able to sort of, or well, maybe I could take that front one out and sort of bend it out to unscrew it. <laughs> anyway, let's hope we don't have to do that. Uh, I also had a look at the control panels. So looking at the original versus control panel, I was trying to work out what's going on with this power for the card reader. Now, it looks like that one of the players has this a different end and that makes sense now because I remember when I plugged this into the Namco end it's got a different plug like for the for the first card reader and not sure why that is or why that that's the case but that's how it is but you can see actually on the on the supporting board there's nothing plugged in here either and it looks like it's getting power from this connector and that's all it requires so player one it literally just has the player one socket and earth uh, it has two cables not connected of course they weren't connected before that come out of that that lot um, but of course it was working so it seems to be all it needed was that power there now if we come to the other one we've got a different socket because this goes into a different plug on the 256 for the card reader for whatever reason 
Now this isn't completely populated, this uh, plug, and it seems to me that maybe it should have been, and it should have got the power through there, but because it doesn't, someone's wired up, and they put power through a split, like one through the, um, the kick harness, and another through the other player because of course on the versus it's got two sockets on both sides of the machine now we can't use the second one because our player two controls are actually going to be using that second socket on the Sega Blast so I'd only be able to use one of these anyway I could use this one obviously because I'll have a kick harness uh, socket that should be able to provide power and I'm hoping because I'll follow it through I'm hoping that that one provides power into here just like the other board and that the, the player 2 one is coming into here and that this is not needed. And the only reason I say that is because, you know, on this, this board is exactly the same board. And there's no power in there. And, of course, this side was working, but it has power there. So I hope that makes sense. It does seem a little bit odd. Again, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe this was supposed to have power running from it. Certainly make it easier to wire up, wouldn't it? It would make a lot more sense. Um, I might even be able to just get a replacement one of these, perhaps. Anyway, um, I think I've uh, got enough knowledge now to know how we can maybe uh, get both card readers going. Obviously, I'm going to have to pull them out of here, and we're going to have to position them somewhere in the Sega Blast cab. And uh, still, I'm not sure where that will be, <laughs> but that will really be uh, one of the last things we do. Right, the other thing is is that I do have a tube for this, so I am going to maybe... Uh, look, the, the plug is different um, for, the, for the mains power, um, but I may still try and see if this works, if the ballast works and it actually fires up or not. Um, if it doesn't, then I will swap in probably a, uh, a, like a 12 volt tube, an LED one. Um, these are pretty good. Uh, I'll just need to draw 12 volts from the power supply. And I should be able to do that because this power supply on the top um, actually states that it supports here uh, plus 5 and or 12 amps and plus 12 volts at 1.5 amps. So, yeah. Um, the other thing I was going to do, of course, was do a test run, but I'm actually starting to run out of time, guys. So, I'm, you know, given the fact that all of this came out of the working versus anyway, um, I'm pretty confident I've got all the right cables. It shouldn't be too much of a drama if I need to add one and back in anyway, once the cab's back together. <coughs> it's easy enough to access the, uh, the power supply there. <coughs> so I think what I'm going to do is uh, start putting this back together and get the wiring harnesses rigged back up and put through into these sockets here um, and basically uh, get all the pieces back on the shell and make sure all the wiring is sorted and we get that light tested and then of course the final step will be to then stick the uh, the monitor back in. And just looking at the cassette speakers that I took out, um, you can see they're a bit worse for wear. Uh, lost, they probably still worked, but you might get a bit of um, distortion there, probably. Um, but they look pretty old and haggard. But yeah, they've got a bit of weight to them. They are a three-way speaker, and uh, probably. Uh, well, I have heard people say that they deliver very good sound, but, you know, it's not going to beat <coughs> having a complete separate with the Logitechs um, and, of course, the big subwoofer, which will be positioned over the back there. Um, I'm not going to use the original JIS screws to screw the cab together. Um, I have got some alternative ones with just normal Phillips heads. So... These guys here, just a normal Phillips head, they're exactly the same. Uh, this is an M6, I think it is. So, yeah, got everything ready to go. Uh, I guess I better just start putting it together, guys. Right, well, we took this off in a slightly different order, if I remember. 
and that was because we weren't quite sure about how everything <laughs> was put together to take it apart. Um, but what we do need to do, we definitely need to get this front plate on before we put the, the front fascia on. Uh, but as you can see, it's, this is not sitting flush with the back. So I've got a big gap here, and that's because I need to get these um, front legs screwed in to jack this up, and then I can get this sitting flat, and then we can get the front on it. And when the front goes on, it's actually got a whole cut, which you can see in the corner there on both sides. It'll be a bit dark in there. There's another one at the back there. Uh, and those go over the top here when the front goes on. So yeah, I'll just lift this back a bit and screw this in and then we'll be ready to, to have this positioned. We'll put the fiberglass on top and then we screw through these three holes uh, on the top. So let's do that now. So getting the sides in guys can be done by yourself, you just need a little bit of coercing to get the tabs lined up so they go in, um, but that snapped in okay. Of course now uh, we can put the bolts in but um, I need to make sure this bottom piece here now is still lined up, so it probably moved and we need to get the screws through this front can't really see in there actually so let's hope oh, I can just see it so yep it looks about right so we'll screw these down first and then we'll do the side panels Okay, so now what I'm going to do is um, put the side screws in for the main cabinet. And I believe there's some underneath, I remember, that we took out last time that we'll need to put back in. But we'll get the sides nicely squared away first and then we can put it on its back and it should stay together. Oh, we can see the remains uh, under here, guys, of one of the JI screws I couldn't get out. Look at that, bird all to hell. Uh, anyway, the other ones I did get out, um, I need to put back in. Um, when I first took it apart, I decided that I wasn't going to take it completely apart, and that's why I just took the front off. So anyway, I've got some ones to go in all around here. There's another one that we left in for the back piece. And then upside here. So yeah. Just got to go screw all those in and then the back of the uh, coin box, the coin box actually is screwed in this one which was really difficult to get out originally, that one and yeah that one there. start sorting out this cabling start uh, threading this stuff through to the right places so let's just get it separated out of course so much easier now that we did all that work previously to separate these Right, so I've pretty much got this sorted out, <laughs> finally. Uh, so I'll be able to push that up and that should uh, keep everything relatively tidy. Now the other thing I need to do is that um, 
I've got an earth cable here guys and it actually goes to the back of the, uh, the door, this top door here. And the door's just got three screws uh, that hold on the, the uh, panel here. Uh, just around the back on the inside so you sort of have to reach around the back so good to do this with the monitor out still so I'm just going to put this door on and uh, connect up the, the earth to uh, connect it through to here and also guys I didn't mention before but I do have another earth cable which is underneath the, um, the main transformer as it was originally so let me get this on here and I shall hook that up I'm going to take the um, coin mech off here I'm not using the coin mech and in here I've got the, um, the volume control for the Logitech. I've just stuck the Logitech in the back there. It's funny how it's such a snug fit. <laughs> it's beautiful. Uh, but this will go here, much like the Astro City. You can just reach inside the door and, and change the volume. Um, because of that, this will get in the way. So I'll just take this mech off, put this door on, be back in a sec. Okay, got all the Logitech uh, speakers hooked up. And of course the door is now now in, so that's all good. Power supply there, the coin mech is gone. Uh, so now we want to get the Namco 256 in, and it's great that it's sitting on this board out of the uh, Versus, which is exactly the same size as the, uh, the metal holder that was in the Versus. It was a different sort of setup, but luckily it's the same common size. And it just will slide in like so all the way to the back and actually locks in at the back there and there's another bit there that keeps it nice and sturdy oh well that's awesome and we've got the uh the kick harness of course for the extra buttons as we know so that's got to come up and then through the uh the control panel We'll do that when we do the control panel side of things. We've got the, uh, let's pull this out. On the Namco, this is uh, straight from the speakers, so it has a direct RCA out for sound, which is going straight to the Logitech. So uh, we can plug that straight into here. And we've got the VGA in two of them there which uh, we'll plug up obviously just the one monitor this time and then uh, we've got the other sockets here for plugging in the card readers so what we can do guys is um, hook up this jammer and um, got a little arrow on it normally for the part side um, but you can also you can also see that uh, you can see where all the earths and power is all coming up this end which will be the little segment here on the jammer. So if you're not sure, that's a good way to check. We can uh, plug this onto here. There we go. So we'll figure the card reader out after. I think what we'll do now is we are pretty much, let's look at everything here. Everything is pretty much connected except for the monitor. So what we could do is we could fire everything up and uh, see if we get sound and if we could hear it boot um, or connect up the old controls and uh, that'll allow me to sort of start a game and I'll be able to hear it run. If I can hear it running then we've got everything sorted up into the monitor and then the card readers basically so um, we'll make sure it's all running and if it is we'll uh, get the monitor in and then we'll uh, work on the controls and of course we've got to set up a whole new set of controls as well so that'll be our next big job but it'll be good to get the monitor in and see it all working so first of all we'll run it blind and uh, see what we get oh there's one other thing we need to do too and that is the marquee light so uh, we'll do that before we put the monitor in but let's uh, at least test to see if it is all working at this point Okay, just double checking everything, there's power, making sure there's nothing hanging around that shouldn't be, all the earths are connected, power's as it should be, the jammer interface is correct, so it's all looking good to me, let's uh, plug it in, let's turn it on, see what happens. Ok, 
Okay, that's the, the dinging noise, which is good. <laughs> and at some point, hopefully, we'll hear it say, Good morning! Which is quite bizarre. With the Namco boots, but that's what it does. Good morning! <laughs> there you go. And now it's booting. And because I don't have the track mode on, I'm not going to hear it when it actually gets there. So uh, I'll just try and hit start in a moment. Give it some time. It may have loaded already. Let's have a look. Yay! King of Iron Fist Tournament 5. <laughs> wow, and that sounds, uh, sounds pretty cool. Raven, get ready for the next battle. <laughs> <laughs> Playing blind. Come on, baby. Show me what you got. Alright. Well, I think that's a uh, yeah. successful test. Obviously, we don't have the card read it on yet, but we will figure that out after. Let's get the marquee going. And uh, then let's get the monitor in. And success with the, uh, with the globe, with the tube. Uh, I initially put this in and um, we've got the earth hook up yet yeah, I'll do that doesn't need earth to run of course but uh, to keep it safe I'll connect that through but uh, yeah initially when I plugged it in it was flickering a little bit and I think at this end um, it was sort of bent out so this is one of those ones where you sort of got to you don't sort of stick it in and twist it in you have to actually sort of push the ends in and get you know the two prongs of the light in one end and do the same to the other end sort of push it in and then pop it in there it doesn't sort of just slide in and because of that it sort of gets pushed out this end gets pushed out and bends out a bit I don't think there was a very good contact so I took the tube out and then just uh, bent this back in more for better contact and uh, yeah it's um, glowing beautifully so uh, now we've got that sorted out, um, I'm just running the AC off the, uh, the power supply here, just off one of the ones of the AC out, and um, that works a treat. So we shall get that up into the cabinet, get the monitor in, and uh, then thought, what I thought I would do guys is in the interim I'm going to take the... Uh, the old control panel out and I'll put in just a single player tech in with a card reader because uh, we know that whole thing works and then we can just uh, stick that straight in and start playing really <laughs> and then I'll spend some time another time actually going through and mapping out making sure that the, the dual player works and having to think about where the the, um, the card readers can go but in the interim I could certainly get it running on a single player uh, setup so I shall do that after the monitor goes in and the rest of the cabinet is put back together. Okay guys, let's uh, get this monitor in. Actually guys, we'll just get this last top plate in and uh, the backlight in place because I've got to drop the wire down the back and be easier to do that and thread it through the cable tie holders while the monitor's out. So uh, you can see in the back of the handle is this little hole there and that lines up with this piece here. Um, and so what happens is you stick this in, it's actually bendy, let me just bend it, hang on. Had to do that with one hand, but anyway, so bend that to get it in. And then uh, it drops down. And once that's positioned, then the, uh, the two screws at the top here okay so that one that one and then uh, underneath you go through there that keeps that in place and then uh, we'll put the um, the light uh, backing plate goes here and uh, simply got screws all the way around so I'll just go ahead and do that and then uh, we'll be ready to put the monitor in. Okay, we've got a problem. Okay, lift this out and let the 
Cave will come out with it. Right guys, well a bit of a change of plan <laughs> unfortunately. It was all going too well I think. Um, once that monitor went in it would have been all uh, all done. Now as you can see from the video the uh, monitor frame on the Sega Versus monitors is not compatible with the Sega Blast. Um, the holes are in the wrong spot. <laughs> so I had two options really. Um, I could have taken, this is the original monitor frame uh, and monitor that came out of the Blast originally. And, and the reason why guys I didn't want to put it in there um, because I needed to mate up a beautiful uh, Naneo MS2931 uh, chassis which is an awesome chassis apparently uh, very rare and hard to find and I managed this to uh, to grab one thanks to Joey at JMac and I just don't know if it works um, he, he obviously sold it to me working so that's fine but I also don't know the state of the tube I definitely don't know the state of this tube this came with the cabinet originally when it was in a non-working state without a chassis so yeah guys I didn't want to sort of um, add extra difficulties <laughs> into the transplant um, however everything else has gone in and is all okay so I think it's worthwhile rather than swapping the frames over which would mean you know removing both tubes and chassis and then putting the you know Sega Versa one in here that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense I might as well just try and get this guy going so the thing that I was worried about though was cabling and cabling connections and I think we've just sort of luckily stumbled across <laughs> all the parts that I need to get this uh, up and working. So I'll show you a few things I found. So first of all on the original uh, monitor where the chassis had been removed, this is the same chassis board as what you would have if the if the chassis was actually there you know this plate underneath you can see the connectors on the side here are the same connectors on here although I've got a extra board populated there we'll talk about that in a moment so basically yeah this obviously had the uh, MS2931 uh, chassis in there previously the cool thing is is that this cabling is for the power um, now it's got the power and it's got this other little one here and I don't know what that is guys normally I just rig up the power to the monitor but looking on the chassis um, I can see the power goes in here and then we got this little one next to it which would fit the other little plug now the wiring for that you know, the two you know just normal black and white for uh, the power but the other colors on there run through and connect up to this brick or connector really and this connector also, I can see it's got the normal RGB um, in there as well. And you can see that's the connection to it. Uh, and on the side there you can see the VGA uh, connection, um, which we definitely want to plug into and use. So we've got the right stuff, um, but I was worried about this connector here, guys, because I thought, well, how am I going to connect up to that? Well, fortunately, when I looked at the Sega Versus wiring, I always thought it was a bit odd um, because they, they didn't have um, original Naneo chassis in them, if you remember. They had been swapped out. And the cable to connect them sort of looks like this. And the thing is, is that from the Sega Blast, from the Sega Power Supply uh, up to the monitor, it actually passes four cables. And the blue and the pink are the power. And the other two, again, I'm not sure what they are, but those are the ones that are running to that little uh, plug here. If we follow those cables through, through this uh, wiring to this plug. Now, of course, this plug doesn't look like it will fit <laughs> in here, but that's because obviously it's got a connector in there already. So let me take that connector off. And now, with that connector removed, this is the connector that fits up to here and slots into here like so and I've checked all the wiring and the red blue green and the power and everything sinks through to the other side uh, and so that's perfect guys that means that can now the other end of this connects up to the power in the 
uh, the Sega Versus used now in the Sega Blast and of course if I want to connect up the sync and um, RGB air signals through from the jammer harness I could do that as well through into here and that would be all uh, multi-synced effectively regardless of the board but at the moment we are just running it from VGA so I really only need to worry about that and worry about getting power and that will do just nicely so I'll keep this for when I need to um, put this back in to the uh, Sega Versus and the reason why this was on here you can see they've hacked this is for the Sega Versus they hacked in the uh, normal sort of monitor power um, plug into the back of it and then also a special connector which would have gone through to the connection on the other chassis so yeah good to have these little uh, converter cables and <laughs> we're very lucky that we've got that so that gives us power in there what else do we need to know well a couple of um, slight oddities with this chassis it's a bit different to other ones so first of all off the back of the tube interestingly enough we've got the red and blue um, we have yellow and green but we've got brown and gray and you know usually these are sort of um, bunched together in one plug and sometimes cut so that you can do sort of reverse you know reverse the yoke and the image on the screen uh, but not so with these ones um, but the good thing is is that this clearly I mean this monitor tube was clearly for the chassis because actually on the chassis itself and again this is rather unique um, is that we've got here the brown and grey connector and over the back here uh, we've got the red and blue um, so it's actually labelled on there as well but normally yeah that's a connector of four where you've got the whole four of them they're not normally split up like that and initially I must admit guys I was looking around on the on the chassis going <laughs> where are the connections <laughs> I was trying to look for the four so anyway, uh, that's for those, so that's all sweet. This guy here will go to the back of the neck board like normal. Might be a ground pin here. So we'll just connect that. Uh, otherwise that neck board will just go straight on, obviously onto the back of the neck. And we've got the power that we talked about before with the, uh, the other little connector. And the only other one that we need to, to look at is We've got um, obviously this is the yeah, this is the VGA uh, connector for our 31 kilohertz, um, which is connected to the board, and we've got this little guy, which is a little remote board for doing the on-screen setup and controls, and so it's just parked here on the chassis. Of course, you could leave it there; it would just mean you'd have to feel around the back of the the monitor with the. Uh, the back of the uh, Sega Blast, you know, taken off. It's currently off at the moment. You could reach in behind there. The better way, though, is to run that board into the little place on the Sega Blast where they actually have a slot for it. So this little slot here, and the way these two holes are, is exactly what this little board will fit into in those two little holes in the offset position. Um, so that's brilliant guys <laughs> uh, I'll be able to feed that through there and have the proper on-screen controls and um, you know it was almost like it was made for it and of course well it was <laughs> so this is a, probably a better better solution actually than trying to use the um, the Sega versus ones I, I think the the biggest unknown will be this tube um, it looks okay um, and the front's really nice too there's no scratches on it or anything but does it work we don't know so um, I think what I need to do is uh, get the chassis into the cage and then I think really we probably should uh, wire this up outside the cabinet and make sure that it does actually work before we go trying to stick it in there and hopefully still this tube is going to clear these speakers <laughs> otherwise that will be another disaster we shall see um, and the only other thing I didn't talk about was the uh, decals um, cable now you so it's got the decals circuit on the side here 
yep this is decals in now you don't you know most ways this is set up is you've got to have this in circuit uh, with a switch so and I don't think although the on screen I must admit this chassis is different so normally you'd have a, a switch in line with this to here you wouldn't just connect this direct to it because often they have power sort of running running through uh, constantly and it's really about when you push a moment uh, momentary switch momentary yeah, I think you know what I mean <laughs> that uh, you hold it down for a moment and let go they will just put the degal circuit into play this one however could be different in that I believe the degal's function is actually on the on-screen uh, setup so when you're on the on-screen display you can actually choose to do the degals and if that's the case then perhaps the circuitry well the circuitry would be um, actually changing oh well that would be sending probably voltage to here to do the degals function so I don't want to risk it though because you can sort of blow up a board if you get it wrong so I need to find that out um, but yeah um, I would suspect and even the way that's sort of hanging here is it's basically right in the right spot just to go straight on to there <laughs> so I suspect that's all I need to do but I'm going to leave it off at the moment I might get a bit of funny coloring issues until I get that uh, ratified all right guys so I'll get this uh, chassis in and uh, let's uh, fire it up and see what we get right we are all wired up chassis is in and uh, neck board was fairly tight to uh, to get on there uh, <laughs> it's always a bit of I just got the power obviously running temporarily out through the cabinet here um, it's always a bit of a worry when you first turn things on you don't know the state of them uh, it's really the tube I'm mainly worried about but um, let, uh, let's see what's ha what will happen. I've got the um, daughter card for configuring it, <laughs> if we get a picture. So anyway guys, let's uh, turn it on and see what happens. Mm. Okay. Now, I don't know if that is sync problem that's flashing like crazy should just turn it off a minute let me think about that okay well that was uh, a bit silly of me so yeah I did I didn't have the VGA cable hooked in <laughs> any of you guys spot that all right so uh, it certainly was no sinking it had no <laughs> no connection at all to any source hmm it should flash like that is that what it would do if you had no source all right, well, let's see what happens this time. Okay, well, it looks uh, overdriven, like the uh, flyback's up way too high, and I guess the colouring is just the degals needing to be corrected. Um, so we'll see what happens if it actually here we go so we have a picture so yeah at the moment I think the flyback is up too high um, but we do have a picture see what it looks like when it comes up and um, certainly going to have to have a go at whoa good morning okay so it's sort of okay all right so if this is supposed to be black we are way off <laughs> all right so yeah okay so let's get the flyback turned way down let's turn down a bit
the little click I think it actually uh, changes sync okay so certainly better in terms of brightness we need to get the colors sorted and of course to do that we really need to out, have the decal circuit going so guys I think I'm gonna do that but I tell you what this is looking promising even just looking at it like this um, but yeah I'm gonna hook up that decals um, cable because I've looked online and that is how everyone else has got it set up with this type of chassis and then we should be able to on screen do the decals through the uh, the circuit because I'm not going to be able to know what colors I'm getting here it looks like it was really out of whack in terms of needing degaussing see if this works ah, okay well the on screen oh that's moving the screen actually okay so there must be why isn't it showing though hmm okay I think I actually selected a mode um, Yeah, this is looking promising though, I must admit. It's looking like a really nice screen if it was the right colours. Okay, power it off and um, we'll put the decal circuit on. I think that's supposed to be white, not purple. Maybe it was supposed to be purple. Got um, a little bit of convergence. Good morning. Is she there? But it may have done a degal out. Looks like it's done a degals on um, fire up. Yeah, we've got pink. Why have we got everything's too pink? <laughs> everything's consistent. Um. So I don't know. Hmm, that's interesting, isn't it? Um, yeah, so we're, our convergence is way out on that top left, top right, so that's a bit unfortunate. Uh, that's normally fairly difficult to get back in. Perfect in the middle though. Uh, what I could do is go into the test mode, I guess, and that'll give me a, a um, fixed screen. Service. Hmm, that's interesting. My service mode button's not working. Um, wiring was still the same. Oh, I don't have my control panel hooked up. That shouldn't affect it because it's going direct. Hmm, okay. Not. There we go. V size, H size, contrast, brightness. Degauss weight, so it's yeah, it's done a weight, so it's got a cycling time. You're allowed to degauss on a certain amount of time. Um, reset 31 and off, is it? V, H, V, contrast, brightness. Yeah, and then the degauss has got the weight. Well, it's interesting that it sort of lost all the other colours after degaussing when those other colours were there but I'm only getting blue and red right now there's no green um, did I knock the cable the VGA cable in enough maybe that's what we really know hmm okay guys well for some reason we've got no green we did have a green before. It is a really looking really nice though, other than that convergence. Looking really, really nice. Oh, hang on. Got colours. Yeah, the whites come back now. Weird. There we go. What? <laughs> what happened there? 
what happened there guys god that looks so good it's so crisp it really is that is an amazing picture um wow but why did it take so long for that color to come in that is so strange hmm okay we need to get a little bit wider too we need to adjust it and of course that convergence is still a problem but we can't do that from these controls let's uh i need to place some magnets on the back of the tube oh there we go see now that's that's how it should have been it's green we can see what's going on um h position v size okay a little bit bigger come back H size, I need to reposition it a bit now. I think the contrast and brightness is pretty much spot on. Don't want to degauss, don't want to reset. V position up a bit. There we go. Wow, that's, God, that's so nice. <laughs> Sorry guys to keep going on about it, but um, you really have to see it to believe it. bigger wow okay well success <laughs> yeah, yeah okay so I know why they go people go on about this uh, monitor and chassis this is really the best monitor now in the games room that's for sure <clears throat> i wonder if the brightness needs to come up a bit it's a little bit dark in the background there isn't it under these dark scenes let's um bring up the brightness a bit yeah that's a little bit better this is supposed to be a dark scene of course but you need to be able to see the background a bit and you sort of can just see it there it's not um it's still looking absolutely deluxe <laughs> if i um go a little bit more on the oh contrast is right up that's i oh, don't know it can go even further uh, contrast is maxed um probably losing a little bit on that are we Is the picture of bringing contrast down a bit i mean i like having a fairly high contrast picture um, just looks so nice but you don't want to lose some details maybe leave it there it's quite an interesting scene this because it's so that's on 72 70 as well sorry yeah contrast 70 I ended up hitting them both on 70 Wow. Okay, well I can play around with that some more later. Um, I guess the main thing is, is that we have a beautifully working screen. <clears throat> a little bit of convergence issues up in the top corners. Um, it's not too bad when you're actually seeing it, but you can see it there. Uh, so I now will get this turned off. I need to get this little board mounted with the controls. Um, and uh, I need to mount that first before the monitor goes in and hey, let's uh, get the monitor in guys um, and geez last test right it's got to clear those speakers all right can't stop looking at this monitor <laughs> so beautiful uh, okay all right let's get get this uh, monitor in the in the uh, machine monitor is in and got the socket set out to get them in nice and tight but look at this guys <laughs> I can't believe how close we got with the speakers let's see if you can see that look at that guys the speakers 
just missed the monitor. <laughs> We're talking a centimeter on both sides. Uh, just missed, just. Okay, I plugged everything else in the back here, guys. Actually quite handy, this opening in the back of the blast. Um, so I've got the, uh, the remote uh, control board is now wired in. The, uh, the power and everything on the side there, and of course the VGA connector. That's it. Um, Got to turn this on, see if it all works, and if it does, then I'll just stick this back plate back on. There's a couple of screws here. Uh, where is it? Just one, two, actually. Um, yeah, one, two, because it's uh, up the top here. One, two, because it's, it slots in, folds up, and those two go there. So we'll do that, and on the front, let's get the uh, the marquee up here sorted out um, I've got a temporary guilty gear marquee and it's unfortunately it's really bad quality got it off eBay looks like someone really just printed it off on an inkjet printer but nevertheless it will do for the moment until I figure out uh, something a bit nicer so uh, let's get let's get the machine started up make sure it's all good and then we'll put this marquee and the back on then we'll come back around to the front and um, we'll put the uh, front monitor surround on and uh, and then we'll be ready to get the controls across not worrying too much about the other doors for the moment I've really got to clean them up get some rust and stuff off those um, so I'll leave those for the moment all right let's keep going slot these two slots in the back here and push that up the top yeah, you can see this is pretty poor quality guys uh, nevertheless um, and then there's just two screws on the top so I'm just going to screw those in make sure you don't screw those in too tight there's so many of these you find are cracked and people have uh, just forced the screw too hard so it's really just holding it in place anyway so even finger tight really is enough and it's all come up good obviously we've still got that convergence issue but maybe I can play around with some magnet strips on the back of the tube still got fairly good access around the back there probably do that maybe all right and we'll put the uh, surround back on now the surround actually needs painting as well so it's another job but it's such an easy thing to take on and off it's no big deal we'll put it back on as it is a tab and there's two tabs at the bottom yeah so that's why we do this now let me put the top in first top in first like that and then There's just two tabs under here guys that you pull when that releases it. Okay, which is just as well because I do need to get that cleaned up. Alright, we're getting there. Put the back on um, and I might turn it off while I do that. So this back plate just clips in the back and then just two screws. So with the control panel guys, um, this is filthy so I need to give it a quick clean. There's the old wiring that was in there, obviously we don't need that. So um, fun zone, 15th of the second 02. Hmm. Um, I'm going to take the lock bar out, um, the key lock would need to be changed anyway. And I do actually have the, the other part of the lock. Uh, to make that work, but I think I'm just going to remove it for the moment. It'll just be easier. Um, I do have, you know, I do have other locks, but we'll do that another day. So I'll just take this off for the moment, make it easier. And uh, then we've got a few screw holes there because that's uh, where the front panel will uh, connect onto. And of course, I need to remove this uh, Guilty Year uh, panel, and we'll swap it straight in for the 
single player Tekken with the card, so we can just run that up for a while. And then we'll get the two players going another time. Okay guys, so uh, I'll get into that. Okay, you've got the big uh, big screw on the top, a little screw here, and then there's one, two, three, four, five, six bolts to uh, to bolt this back on. So my screw's already on there, so I'll just pop this on top. Right, one tick and blast city. <laughs> okay, this is going to be player one. Earth and that's all, that's the player to kick. It's got to go down and get hooked up the reader. But that's really it for just the one player. Fire it up and we should be good to go. Well guys there you go. It's all uh, all done and dusted finally. <laughs> what an effort that was. And did I make the right move? I think I did. I, I think I did. Um, this is much better for a number of reasons. And I wanted to get this Sega Blast up and running, guys. It's been sitting in my study for, for, for a year. And it's such a nice cabinet. And uh, it solved that problem. I could get that going quickly. Yeah, it probably would have been nice to have the blast power supply and stuff. Uh, as I said, I've got one coming, um, so I can always do that down the track. And, uh, and of course, I've still got all the parts for the Sega Versus in the shed. Um, so, you know, I can bring that back to life again if I really wanted to go through the process of pulling this down and building that other one back up. But I seem to do these crazy things, so nothing's out of the question, really. Um, but right now, um, I'm, I'm really, really loving this. I can't, I, can't, I can't get over this screen, guys. The more I've looked at this screen, um, it's mesmerizing. <laughs> it's just so beautiful. Uh, and it just probably doesn't come out well in the camera. Obviously, I've got a lot of lights on here as well, just for the, for the, uh, for the video camera and... Um, it doesn't wash out the screen at all, but I tell you what, when this is dark in here, wow, this this is something else. So, um, so that was a bit of a pain having to to have to you know go through that process of having to get this this monitor in, and it was all a bit of an unknown. But I'm glad that that worked out that way. I'm glad I didn't actually just swap the frames over and and keep the old um, monitor and chassis. I mean, the old monitor and chassis was all right, guys, but wow, this is this is crazy guys so uh, if you haven't subscribed please do subscribe i hope you got something out of this video again i know it's a little bit it gets it's not exciting guys is it really going through you know cables and how this stuff works but if you are building one of these you're thinking about building one of these or just want to sort of build up your confidence about the wiring and stuff hopefully this sort of video has helped you out um, make you feel a little bit more confident in your own project hope you learned something from it um, but as always guys thanks for, for joining me on my on my never-ending journey and um, certainly look forward to to seeing you in future videos uh, but until then um, have you got a 20? <laughs>